Hi everyone, this is the QY700 sequencer by Yamaha and this is a follow-up video to the live jam video I did recently uh, where I used this and some other kind of 90s uh, MIDI gear um, so thanks everyone for watching that one uh, a few of you have asked for a bit of a, a, a tour around this a bit of a, a deep dive into some of the functionality of this sequencer um, which is a bit of a beast to be honest and there's a lot to cover so I think what I'm going to do is mostly focus on the pattern mode, which I used for that video. Um, but yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly go through each of the sort of main sections of the sequencer, give you a kind of overview, and then I'll go a little bit deeper into the kind of stuff I was doing on that video, which if you hadn't haven't seen, then I'll put the link in here somewhere. Um, so yeah, each of these main sections here I'll go through. Um, first up is song mode. And yeah, this is pretty much um, your kind of standard full song arrangement side of things. Uh, I actually used to use this quite a lot with BIS when we did uh, live shows um, where we would basically, you know, load in our kind of MIDI files um, from our DAW at the time and then just kind of do that um, pretty much straight through, you know, basically full MIDI tracks start song, end song, <laughs> next song. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll, I'll maybe kind of do that, something more about that in another video. Uh, the pattern mode is obviously the one we're going to focus on and this is where you can build, I don't know, four bar, eight bar, 16 bar patterns, whatever you like and use uh, up to 16 tracks and different phrases, uh, sort of patterns if you will. Um, and you can kind of, um, use up to one, two, three, four, five, six, nope, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, <laughs> eight different variations of that pattern, or, you know, it's a bit like, I guess, a very kind of super simple version of, say, Ableton Live, where you've got your, your grid of patterns, um, so there's some cool stuff we can do with that, I'll, I'll go into that a bit more shortly. Uh, the utility menu is just your kind of standard stuff like master tune and um, what you can do with your foot switch, whether it's start, stop or switching sections or sustain, that kind of thing. And obviously just what you can do with your pitch and assignable wheel, which by default is just modulation, kind of as you'd expect. Uh, voice, um, this menu is, or this mixer rather, is accessible from various areas in the, in the thing, but this is where you can assign your sounds, um, and you can assign effects, effect levels, and just levels in general. Um, you can do things like tuning and voice editing as well, so this sequencer has a lot of internal sounds using the kind of Yamaha TG tone generator kind of general MIDI I guess you would call it um, sounds but yeah there's a, there's a lot of sounds and a lot of effects and stuff you can do with this so this is pretty cool you can obviously assign filters to sounds and envelopes and vibrato portamento or portamento rather <laughs> excuse the accent um, all those kinds of things we have effects um, so basically you have three effects um, Assignable uh, reverb. Uh, there's different types of reverbs there. Uh, no effect. Hall, hall, room, stage, tunnel. That's a good one. Basement. And then you've got a chorus, which is either like basic chorus or celeste, um, flanger. And uh, another one up here, which is variation. So you can either switch this on or off if it's in insertion mode, or you can make it a uh, an assignable, um, a mixable rather, effect. So yeah, there's lots of cool stuff in there. Um, you can do all your, you can change your reverb times, you can play with the diffusion, the filtering on those. Yeah, lots to cover there, but again, that's probably for another video. Um, disc is just, yeah, pretty much as you'd expect. It's actually floppy disc in this. Um, so you can load up files, say files to floppy. Uh, this one has just the original floppy drive in it, but you can get mods for this, I think, to uh, use a pen drive, a USB drive, that kind of thing. 
So that kind of covers the the basics of the thing and I will now go into the pattern mode and have some fun with that. Okay, so here we are in pattern mode. Um, I'll just go through what we've seen on the screen here. So when you come into pattern mode, you'll end up on pattern one. Actually, this is something a wee bit annoying about the QI is that, say you're working on pattern three, if you navigate out to song mode or voice mode and go back to pattern mode, you'll end up in pattern one again. So that can be a bit annoying. Something to bear in mind. Maybe just use pattern one all the time. Um, so yeah, you have pattern one there, and uh, it goes up to 64 patterns. Um, and each pattern is made up of, well, there's eight available sections in a pattern. Uh, so A being the first. Uh, these are accessible on the section buttons at the bottom here. So you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. And they can be, you'll see this, uh, the letter here is, is moving as I flick uh, between them. And so that is basically your your way of switching between sections. Um, if you're doing, say, a live jam type thing, um, you can switch between the sections here and it will it will sort of snap to the next bar um, before the transition. So in each section, you have the 16 available tracks. Each of these tracks can hold phrases. Uh, a phrase is basically a if you if you use Ableton Live, um, you'll be familiar with the idea of scenes and clips. So this is what is happening here. You basically have phrases which are essentially clips, and the QI has a load of preset uh, built-in phrases that you could use. Uh, you might not want to. Obviously, yeah, there's rock and roll and you know uh, percussion bits and all that kind of stuff. Um, to get to that, to user patterns, ones that you can record yourself, you have to scroll all the way to the right and you'll see US and 001, 2, 3, and that just gives you, you have quite a lot to play with. 127, I think, that, oh, it's 99, okay, it's 99. Um, so, yeah, you have each of these um, sections here is a, a measure. So basically this this pattern is four bars long. You can see that up here. Um, it says bar one of four. Uh, that means that each of these sections here is, is a measure. It's a bar, actually. It says M001. That's just confusing. It's a bar. Um, and you can use a particular clip on the first bar, you could then, sorry, phrase, <laughs> you could then uh, switch to another one for the second or third bar, that kind of thing. And same again for the last bar. And yeah, you can kind of build up any number of styles of pattern here. Um, and obviously, sorry, going between the sections, so you get blank sections there, Go back to A and that's it still there for you. So there's a few things you can do with this. If you're, say, if you have a, a section, section A that you like and you want to maybe work on that or maybe have a variation of that or a broken down version of that, uh, the QI has this uh, nifty job section, uh, job menu, which lets you do things like, well, from the top here, we've got undo and redo, for example, you can actually undo things if you don't like them. Uh, quantize, we can come back to that. Um, for the the track, we can, actually we can copy pattern, so we have style one, section all, track all. We can copy all that stuff into another pattern if we want to, or we can actually copy what we have into another section. They call it style here, that's just also a bit confusing because that means pattern as far as I can figure out. Uh, so yeah, we have section A that we want to copy. So we can just go, and I'm using the little wheel here to go through these bits. Um, and we just want to 
do that, exit, and then we can see that that uh, A section has been copied into the B section. So that's pretty cool. We can do that for each of the other sections as well. Okay, so what I think I'll do now is just get rid of everything we have here. So um, I will go into the job menu and I will, there we are already at it, a clear pattern. And down to the section and if we just go like that, we can say clear style one section all and that's that done. Go back to pattern and we have a blank canvas again. So let's say we want to now start building our own pattern. Um, so a few things you could do first, I would probably start with the voices getting some sounds together. Obviously I'm just using mostly internal QI sounds. I've got the Minotaur here as well just for a bit of um, external MIDI demonstration. So yeah, there's a voice menu in this pattern area. Uh, that's going to bring up this mixer menu and you have this voice selection choice so you've got phrase by default and um, what that means is basically if you're using a, a preset phrase um, then there's going to be a sound associated with that phrase so that will just you know default to the sound it was intended to be used with um, but you can just select pattern instead and voice category so you've got your kind of melodic sounds you've got sfx i think that is uh, and kits uh, then you've got program and yeah just a few different kits here analog kit always good one to start with um so there we go um down from there we've got the effects so we've got reverb and i think i'll just turn reverb off on this one chorus and, and variation um so i might set up a few, two or three different drum options. Let's get maybe something different, like a jazz kit. Sounds good. Uh, and then, yeah, we'd be on to something like, I feel like maybe some strings, something like that, <laughs> if I can find some. Okay, I'm going to go for whatever comes first that sounds remotely usable. Ooh, we're into strings now. Yeah, okay, okay. Bits of cattle. Oh, nice. Interesting. Okay. Um, so what else? We can get something else just for demonstration. Uh, let's pick something. vibes nice so yeah um obviously in my demonstration video with the whole 90s midi rack i was using all external sounds um but yeah there's a bit cleaner just doing it this way just for demonstration what i will do though is i will assign track five to the minotaur now i'll just go back to pattern mode for a sec so this is a little bit funky, the how this is done. It's a bit strange, but so be it. Um, we actually have to go into song mode to assign external MIDI stuff. So I go to song, I go to output channels, and then I have to go to this F6 here, which is pattern tracks. So go there and see I'm on track five there. And so what I want to do is, this top row is the internal sounds, internal channels actually. Um, bottom row is MIDI out B and this middle one is MIDI out A. So I've got... Now that's actually two sounds playing, that's an internal sound and the, the Moog. But there, I've got that on channel one. If I then go back to pattern mode, that's not working. That's because I'm I was on the top section. There we go. No 
no doubt easier to use a MIDI keyboard <laughs> to get these notes in, but hey-ho. And there's our drums. And there's the analog stuff, lovely. So then what I need to do is, so I'm on section A, so that's cool. I will then go scroll around to get to the user pattern. So that's user pattern one, uh, which is empty just now. So there's a few record modes. Um, if you hit record, you'll see this come up here and we've got step mode, overdub mode and replace mode. Uh, let's just start with replace mode and we'll kind of record some stuff in live. Uh, also, we have here on the right hand side, oh, I actually need to come out of record mode to change that. Um, the metronome mode, so yeah, that can be off altogether, or it can only play in record mode, or it can play in play mode, or it can play all the time. So I would probably stick that to record, and it's going to give us a one bar count in before it actually kicks in, so let's try that. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. You st sometimes you just have to navigate around, um, it's maybe not as intuitive as you would like, but such is life. Okay. So that's it, and that's it recorded in raw, unquantized. Um, if you want to get quantizing straight away, you can go to edit mode. Nope. Actually, edit mode is pretty good if you want to tweak the velocities and things like that, individual notes. Pretty old school appearance, like it. Um, but yeah, go into the job menu. Let's go actually quantize. So this will let you quantize the whole lot to whatever note length um, you want to. And you can do things like set swing, set velocity, if you want to actually up the velocity of all those. In fact, I might just do that because that's coming kind of medium. Let's just get them maxed out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then just that and we should have a nice quantized let's just go back to that sec I think strength is maybe no that's fine that's fine okay interesting right so Sure why that last clap is so loud. Let's actually look into that. Go into step mode. So you hit step mode and then you hit start. And this lets you just step through each so I'm going to take that one out. Just like that. And then I'll maybe stick another one in. So pretty much the same as it was before. Cool, not to worry. Okay, so then I've got another drum track here, so Let's just go with hats. Okay, and I think I'll go into record mode. Oh, so I actually have to set our pattern first of all. Go into replace mode. Wonky. Okay. 
So that's fine. So the other thing we can do, and if we don't want to actually hard quantize all the notes, we can just leave it as is. Um, but we can use the play effects option. Now this gives you basically, yeah, play effects. It's it's a whole load of different quantizations, <laughs> uh, grooves, if you will, that you can select from. So. Actually, I'm in the wrong bit, so that's fine. So groove, um, and then templates. So you can see at the top here, it's got uh, the type of quantizer. So template three is the 16 quantizer. So that's just a very kind of strict 16. Once you get further up these options, it starts getting a bit interesting. So there's like a a drunk option. <laughs> Some different kind of grooves. Yeah, that's pretty drunk. So I think actually what's happened there is it's kind of doing a little bit of. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's got a little bit of a groove there. It's maybe if I actually quantized those notes strictly and then applied the template, it might behave slightly differently. Okay. So that's cool, and then I'll just get something else down for... Just some really kind of obvious chords, just to get something down. Obviously that last bit was a bit rubbish, so I'm going to do that again. I think I'm just going to give that a straight up quantize. Okay, and then I'll just do a bit of quantizing on that. However, I think I will apply a bit of a, a groove to that as well. So back to play effects. And let's see what we have here. Let's go in into the 12s there. So what have we got? Actually change that sound because it's getting a little bit annoying.
getting proper garage now. Interesting. Okay. So then you've got the, the Moog over here. Okay, and then back to play FX, give that some kind of Swing. This is one of the best bits about this actually is just the, the preset grooves that are available. Um, So that's that. Um, so yeah, like I said earlier, you you can kind of copy that that pattern, that section rather, to another section. So yeah, like I said, you can copy that section, that A section, to the B section. So let's just do that to give us a bit of stuff to play with. Uh, let's go back to job, go to pattern, copy pattern. Yep, there we go. So style one. Pattern one, rather. Section A to section B. And let's just do C as well. So that then gives us... Yeah, so that's us got three identical sections at the minute. Obviously, we can go in and... Go to section B and let's say just remove one of the parts. So that's the analog kit part. So already you kind of get, you're getting an idea of like how you can use these different sections to give yourself options for arranging your, your jam or your tune. Um, even just that simple kind of dropping out of some drums and bringing it back in. So the other things you can do with this is you can mute on the fly as well. So solo. Another thing that I really like about this that I actually didn't manage to fit into my last video is you have these additional things to play with here. So you've got beat shift and scale time. So let's just go to a percussion track. So that's the hats. So basically what you can do here is you can shift by a sixteenth or multiple of sixteenths. So you can get kind of wonky with it. You can use zero and return to reset to where you were. So 
that's really cool. I only discovered that recently and I thought that's brilliant. If you just want to, you know, you've got your variations, you've got different sections, you've kind of got uh, stuff dropping in and out. You can also tweak it like that as well. Um, and I think, I think those changes stay when you jump between sections as well. Let's just try that out. Yeah, that still applies when you jump between sections. So you have to reset that. I haven't found a way to just kind of blanket reset when you change pattern or something like that. That'd be nice. So there's a few things that you'd love to be able to do with this. Um, like be able to control two aspects at one time. So switching your your section, for example, whilst also unmuting something. But you have it's very much like where your cursor is. That's what you're controlling. Um, there's probably more to this that I haven't actually managed to explore yet. Uh, so this is just what I know right now. Uh, probably what I'll do is you know a follow up video or two because there's so much more to to really talk about with this thing. But yeah, that's going to give you an idea of what I did with my last video, how I was using this as a sequencer for the kind of dawless jamming that we're all very much fond of right now. And um, yeah, I say there's probably plenty more that I could touch on in all these separate menus. I say there's lots of controls for effects. Um, particularly, well, I mean, obviously that only applies to the internal sounds. Um, but some of the internal sounds ain't bad. I mean, this is the thing. You've got so many, you know, percussion type sounds in there. Uh, you've got standard kind of stringy sounds, piano sounds. And, you know, they they they, they serve their purpose. Um, when we use this sequencer for bis gigs, um, we would often fill out our arrangements with piano sounds and organ sounds, string sounds, that kind of thing from this, whilst also triggering the Roland R5 drum machine, the Alesis Nano Bass and things like that. Uh, and it toured the world with us and it never broke. The only, we had two of these. Um, the first one actually broke because somebody broke it. <laughs> uh, a disgruntled um, band we were playing with <laughs> decided to smash it up. So yeah. We ended up getting this one as a replacement and it's lasted since yeah since i don't know 1997 or something so pretty solid um it's maybe not it's it's going to be missing some of those mpc type features that everyone feels like comfortable with and the rolling type sequencer stuff as well uh, so it's a bit it's unique let's put it that way um there's plenty you can do with it and by all means, if you think there's something that I could touch on more or you'd like to hear more about a certain feature that I've used or whatever, then just drop me a comment and I will do my best to embellish on this video. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. Cheers.